Uh, it's good to be together again on Sunday morning. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's great to feel um, the Holy Spirit together um, tuning in. Uh, so this morning I'd like to talk about um, seeking God, and particularly in, in times of difficulty, in times of uh, barrenness. Um, you may have heard a few, a couple of months ago, uh, I spoke about Andy and Eva Shepherd, who are in Nepal at the moment, they're missionaries over there. And they want to thank everyone for, who donated to them and for everyone's prayers and support. They really appreciate as a congregation supporting them. So about two weeks ago, I had a, a prayer email from them and they, they were making themselves quite vulnerable. Um, they've been married 22 years and they've not been able to have children as yet. Obviously, that's, that's not a bad thing. Um, they have an adopted son, um, a grown up um, guy called Sujan, and they have spiritual children over there. But recently, God's been challenging them to, to hold on to his promise to them um, that they would have a daughter called Faith. So um, as part of this, Andy felt that he should build a crib for this, um, this little girl um, called for Faith. So a Faith crib, if you like. Um, and he's been spending time between everything else uh, building this crib. I think we've probably all experienced times of difficulty, uh, times of pain, when we've got to hang on in faith to things. And this morning, so I'd like, I'd like to look at the story of Hannah from 1 Samuel, uh, chapter 1, verses 9 to 20, and uh, then sort of bring out a few points about that. So, Nick, maybe you could put the scripture up. Great. Once after a sacrificial meal at Shiloh, Hannah got up and went to pray. Eli the priest was sitting at his customary place beside the entrance of the tabernacle. Hannah was in deep anguish, crying bitterly as she prayed to the Lord. And she made this vow, O Lord of heaven's armies, if you'll look upon my sorrow and answer my prayer and give me a son, then I will give him back to you. He will be yours for his entire lifetime. And as a sign that he has been dedicated to the Lord, his hair will never be cut. As she was praying to the Lord, Eli watched her. Seeing her lips moving but hearing no sound, he thought she had been drinking. Must you come here drunk, he demanded. Throw away your wine. Oh no, sir, she replied. I haven't been drinking wine or anything stronger. But I am very discouraged and I was pouring out my heart to the Lord. Don't think I'm a wicked woman. For I've been praying out of great anguish and sorrow. In that kind of case, Eli said, go in peace. May the God of Israel grant the request you have asked of him. Oh, thank you, sir, she exclaimed. Then she went back and began to eat again, and she was no longer sad. The entire family got up early the next morning and went to worship the Lord once more. Then they returned home to Ramah. When Elkanah slept with Hannah, the Lord remembered her plea. And in due time, she gave birth to a son. She named him Samuel, for she said, I asked the Lord for him. Great, thanks, Nick. So Samuel here sounds like the, the Hebrew for heard of God. So I want to draw out a few points from this story that I think we can relate to our situation. In verse 8, uh, so the first point is Hannah refuses to accept the status quo. In verse 8, Hannah, Hannah's husband Elkanah says to her, you have me. Isn't that better than ten sons? She's, he's trying to comfort her and bring her to a point where she's able to accept her situation. But Hannah, in effect, says no, and she doesn't accept the status quo, even after many years of 
being barren. In verse 7, we read that Hannah was reduced to tears. And in verse 10, it says that she cried bitterly and prayed to the Lord. Sometimes when we're crying, we feel the need to pull ourselves together um, and to stop crying. But in this situation, to do so would be to let go of God. Tears are a precious gift from God in times like this. You may have heard this story. In, in the late 1800s, uh, a couple of Salvation Army uh, workers were having real problems um, in their evangelistic situation. There was very little happening. So they sent a telegram to William Booth, uh, the founder of the Salvation Army, asking for his advice. And um, he just sent a telegram back to them, uh, which had two words, try tears. Is there a situation in your life that you'd like to see changed? Could be uh, a long-term illness, um, an area of addiction, maybe a, a grief or a, a sense of loss that you're carrying. Perhaps it's time not to accept the status quo but to come to God and pray desperate prayers. The second point I'd like to make is uh, that Hannah pours out her heart to God. As we read the whole chapter, as we read the story, there's a progression in Hannah's relationship with the Lord. Perhaps the answer to her prayer is withheld until uh, she comes to a, a place where her motives are pure, where she's able to give back to God um, the answer to her prayer. In verse 11, it says, she made this vow, O Lord of hosts, if you will look upon my sorrow and answer my prayer and give me a son, I will give him back to you. He will be yours for his entire lifetime. She come to a place of complete surrender to God. So when Samuel was old enough, um, Hannah took him to the tabernacle and left him there to assist Eli, the priest. A big part of prayer is the secret place. It's a place that only, only we know uh, before God. It's a private thing. Um, sometimes we can try and go through the motions. Sometimes we can lose that, that sense of doing dealings with God. So prayer changes situations, but it also changes us. I remember um, one time uh, living at, at Bright Flame uh, quite a few years ago. Uh, I, I was at the Haygard Centre in Willanor. I don't know if it's even still there, but uh, I knelt down at the back in, in a Sunday morning meeting and I just I just wept. I cried out to God. Um, I came to the end of myself and surrendered to him in a, in a deeper way. And after that, I chose to trust God more and I chose to enjoy life more. Um, and I'm sure that after that point, I was, God was able to use me more, um, more fully uh, as I was working with him, um, winning souls to Christ. Do you feel there is frustration and pain stored up in, in your heart? Do you feel burdened and struggle to see a way forward? Why don't you go for a walk with God and pour out your heart to him? I, I think he hears our, the cries of our heart. The third, the third point I want to make is that God responds to Hannah's prayers. As a result of Hannah's prayers, she received receives God's blessing, the promise from God and through Eli by faith. You can read that in verse 17. Often as we pray, there comes to a point where there's a peace and we can rest in God's promises. And finally, God remembers Hannah, verse 19. It's not that she's forgotten, but it's now that he brings into being the promise based on his loving kindness. In fact, God does much more than she asks. Hannah gives birth to Samuel 
and Samuel in his ministry brings the nation of Israel back from idolatry. He anoints kings and it's from one of them, from David's line, that a child is born who will be the saviour of the world. A story about George Muller. Um, one morning he gathered the children in one of the orphanages in Bristol together for breakfast, but they had no food at all. They'd run out. He prayed, Dear Father, we thank thee for what thou art going to give us to eat. It's a good faith prayer, isn't it? Suddenly there was a knock at the door. It was the baker. He'd been unable to sleep because he was sure the Lord wanted him to bake bread for, for Muller and the children. Children, Muller said, we not only have bread, but we have fresh bread. Almost immediately, there was a second knock at the door. It was the milkman. The milk cart had broken down outside the orphanage and he offered the milk to the children, completing their meal. We too can believe God for his provision to us and for greater things. There's a, another scripture. Maybe you can put that one up. Nick, from Ephesians 3, verse 20. Okay, now all glory to God, who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. God does more. God is able. My question to you is what are you believing God for at this moment? What do you feel God is putting on your heart to pray? So to conclude, um, we, we look around the UK at the moment, around the world, uh, with the coronavirus situation, it's, uh, going into a recession, people losing their jobs, many people struggling financially and obviously um, different health scares that people are having. As a church, it's, it's not been an easy time. Um, we've had some fresh media interest about the, the apostolic group. Um, different community houses are being sold, uncertainty, and people have been leaving us. In some ways, this can be compared to that situation of, of barrenness that we've been reading about. I believe God is calling us to, to pray and to seek him. There's something about prayer um, that is a bringing to birth of the new thing that God wants to do. We can see that with Hannah. And um, I think, Steve, you mentioned it at the beginning of the meeting about God's new thing. I, I was going for a walk um, around Stoke Green just earlier on. I, I lived at Bright Flame for about... 15 years, I think, um, 13 years. And um, I was thinking about the times that I used to go around there and pray and seek God. But I, I felt also that it's not seeking God for yesterday, but it's seeking him for today, for today's manner, for today's word, for today's the new thing that he's doing. So in the same way that God cried out to, that Hannah cried out to God in her weakness, and in her desperation, God's calling us to not just accept the status quo, to pour out our hearts to him and to believe that he will respond to our prayers. Yeah, let's pray together. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we, we look to you. Father, thank you for your provision to us. Lord, we want, to, we want to seek your face. We want to cry out to you for the new thing that you want to do in us and in our church. Lord, Lord just come into any areas of disappointment, of, of lack, of need, Lord, in us. And we pray that you would provide going forwards for every need. And even more than that, you'd give more than we ask or imagine. 
because you're a great God, because it's your nature. You're a, a God of loving kindness, a God of faithfulness. Yeah, we just want to put our lives into your hands again and pray that you'd move today, this day, in Jesus' name.